Oh, magic makers. So this is a, such an amazing topic. And I know so many of you are going to be like pulling out your papers and taking some notes and hopefully taking more action than taking notes. This is all about all or nothing. And I am, you know, I'm, I'm a card carrying member of the all or nothing club. I probably should, we could start a support group with the all or nothing mindset. And I had to find someone who is an expert in this. And I brought in Dr. Joyce Haymaker, and we're going to talk all about how do we fall into this all or nothing pattern? And for the love of God, how do we break out of this all or nothing pattern? Welcome to the show, Dr. Haymaker. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kim. It's a pleasure to be here with you and your, your, your community. Yeah. Thank you so much. You know, I always do a little stalking of my guests and I just love just your approach to everything. You know, it's very um, strategic. It's very logical. There is a flow to it. It's not kind of like, let's throw it against the wall and see what sticks. Right. Absolutely. They know that they absolutely, I call it data driven natural yes. medicine because it really does. I really do. I lean on data, data, but I will say I equally lean on information. And I think about the difference between the two is like data being numbers, right? Labs and, you know, real objective data, right? Yeah. Um, and information being what you can tell me about your health and your life in your experience that no lab can tell me, right? And so taking those both together and, um, you know, working with our shared intention, you know, really your intention for your health and your life allows us to embark on a journey that is both targeted, right? We, we know where we're going and we have signposts along the way, but it also is human, right? You know, when was the last time you went from A to B with only a straight line? If the distance is far, probably never, never. right? Never, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so, you know, we want to honor the truth of humanity, but we also do want to keep our North Star. You know, yeah. what is our intention for for your health and your life? And, and use that uh, as the guiding light in the journey along with all of the data and information so that we can be targeted in our path forward. Yeah, no, I, I like that. And, you know, I wanted to step back to what you said, you know, you said your, um, your labs only tell you part of the story. And I was like, when you said that, I was like, oh my God, you know, finally, you know, I know many women, you know, have felt like the doctor, like, look at your labs. Okay. So what's going on, you know, and like quickly, you know, with the, with the 4.5 minutes that they have per client and, you know, shoving you out the door when you were like, wait, wait, but I have some, <laughs> I have some questions here. And you just, you know, I feel like, or sometimes the labs, like you look at the labs and you're like, hmm, this number seems a little high or this number seems a little low, you know, are we keeping your, my eye on it? Like, should I keep my eye on it? <laughs> Right. Cause it, it, absolutely. And people will come to me with that question all the time. You know, this number was a little high, but my doctor said it was fine. Is it? Yeah. And sometimes we find genuinely it's like a, an artifact of fasting, right? There's certain lab numbers that when people are fasting and they're maybe a little dehydrated, they might show up wonky, but as you, the patient, you have no reason to know that, you yeah. know, and so me, really so much of my partnership with the people who I work with is about making sure they understand, right? Yeah. I want people to forward with the understanding of how their body is working and how we can help it work better, right? How we can yes. elevate your, and also how that'll show up in your labs over time, right? I want right. it to show up experience, but, you know, for some people, we really want to move those lab numbers too. Otherwise the path ahead is not looking great. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Cause it's, you know, cause I know for, I know someone like myself, like I know the math, right? <laughs> so, and my doctor, she knows I know the math. So I'm like, she knows I'm going to ask her the freaking question. So like, I'm with you, you know, one test, the number's a little wonky. Then I'm like, huh. Ah, and then I'll, I'll see the numbers. I'm like, what did I do the day before? And it's like, did I get a good night's sleep? I, um, you know what? I ate a big meal before I went and took tests and I'm like, all right, I, I will 
won't get, I won't get crazy. But the second time that number shows up a little wonky, I'm like, okay, there's something going on here. And you know, it also depends on what number it is, right? Because right. not every number gets wonky with fasting and not every number gets, you know, so there are sometimes there are lab numbers where if it's high, like, you know, there's more investigation to be done. Right. And for me, yeah. I'm like, I'm with you. Like, it's like, all right, the first time, like, all right, you know, sometimes, you know, labs are a little, you know, whatever, whoever took the test um, or performed the test at the lab or what, you know, maybe it's a different lab they went to. So I'm willing to go with all that. But I'm like, if over the course of three or four tests, I'm like, okay, this number has remained in the weird zone. We should talk, right? <laughs> Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I love that. And I feel that, you know, many of us um, need to kind of ask the question, you know, like you could say to me, you know, Kim, um, did you fast? You know, so you make me start to ask myself better questions versus mm -hmm. just, you know, coming in and expecting you to fix me. So well said, Kim, because, you know, really, my work with people is a partnership. It is yeah. collaborative. You know, it's it's funny when uh, whenever I work with people, the first step before we actually officially work together is exploring, yes. right? You know, going on a date. Is yes. this a good fit or not? You know, and that happens through a thirty minute complimentary consultation. And when once in a while, I'll I'll encounter someone who will say something like, "How are you going to fix me?" And um, it's You're pretty not much a washing fun. machine. It's not going to fit. It's not going to be a fit, right? If, yes. if we, you know, go back to your GP and ask them to fix you, right? But this is not how it works, right? So it, 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 the people who I work with are learners, yes. right? They really get, they have a say on how their, their health goes, right? Um, it doesn't mean that uh, they get to determine everything, every twist and turn, but they definitely have a say, right? right. And they get that. And so, um, you know, stepping into working together with a perspective of how can I? Yeah. And, you know, really having it be a journey of collaboration so that, right, I can gear them up with the information and the understanding and also support them in very specific ways so that at the end of our journey together, the end of our shared journey, our work together, they know how to preserve the outcomes they've produced, right? right. If it's weight loss, they know how to keep the weight off that they've lost. If it's having their cholesterol in a great range, they know how to keep those numbers shiny, beautiful, and in the green zone. Right. Uh, if it's healthy digestion, they know how to take care of their body such that their digestion is seamless and isn't even on their radar as a concern. Whatever it is, they know what to do. And they also know how to keep doing it, right? right. There's a great quote that is, knowledge is effective action. Knowledge oh. is effective action. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, anytime someone says to me, well, I know what to do. Yes. Okay, great. But if you're not doing it, it's not knowledge. It's just information. Exactly. I mean, and listen, we're all humans. We all have areas where we know what to do, right? But, you know, shifting that information into the camp of knowledge is really, uh, first it's turning it into information and then it's turning it into knowledge. That That's really yeah. the journey. Yeah, for sure. And, I, you know, I'd love how you, you, you know, you talk about um, working with you or even your doctor as it's a partnership, you know, it's kind of like, there's only but so much your doctor can do for you. You have to kind of take that ball and run with it. Cause it's like, you're only with your doctor a handful of times every few months, maybe every year. And you can't expect, like, a, you know, you said, fix me, right. You know, it's, we're not a washing machine. We can't be fixed. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, the, so this was a great tangent that I, where you're like, I love, I love this, but what I brought you on for is that, you know, a lot of us fall into this all or nothing, I think, because we feel like we can be fixed and mm -hmm. that in order to be fixed, here's the list and it must all, all be done right now, or it's nothing. I, clearly I'm not going to get any results. 
Right, 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 right. It's it's the whole mindset of I must do whole 30 or paleo perfectly or AIP or whatever the diet right. is. Or all of them at the same I time. Must. Exactly, <laughs> right. I need to intermittent fast and be on AIP and also do CrossFit in my sleep. Right. But I need to sleep. I do need to sleep. Um, you know, right. so right. it's, I'll it's sleep in the car while in, in, during a uh, uh, pick up <laughs> yeah, yeah right exactly so that that whole perspective that is it's either a hundred you know all in or all out exactly. right it's either aggression expressed as unsustainable deprivation or it's aggression expressed as just nothing, right? Absolutely overindulgence, right? So yeah. it's deprivation or overindulgence. And and that's the paradigm of all or nothing. And again, the 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 common root of both of those, the deprivation or overindulgence is self-aggression. Yeah. And so, you know, when I work with people in their journey to master their middle ground, right? They they have an aha, like this perspective first of all I didn't invent it I inherited it right, right. I was born in a diet culture oh for sure you know, if, if any one of us here you know in your audience you me right what if any one of us could have in, invented our relationship with food out of the gate we would have invented something much better <laughs> Yeah, we wouldn't have been like you know if you like putting your your wish list together you're like you know what you know what I really want? I want a fucked up relationship with food. <laughs> Don't, that sounds great for like I decades. Love that. Yeah. You know? I just want to feel like I can't win. That yeah. sounds fun. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I always want to feel behind. Yeah. That's the feeling I want. <laughs> love it. So, you know, this broken all or nothing approach, right? When people get this aha, there's like, I'm done with it. I, yeah. I'm just so over it. And they're ready to embark on a journey of mastering their middle ground really the starting point is self-love, yeah. right? It's self-love. And in, in when I work with people, we start by getting them in touch with their intention for their health and their life, right? Their intention for their health and their life. And so for any of your listeners right now, right? You know, if you're driving, please don't do this exercise yeah. at this moment. But, um, but definitely circle back and do it. Uh, but, you know, something I invite you to do is to do a little time traveling. So, you know, time travel five years from now, it's 2027, October 2027, when we're re recording this, right? So five years from now. And tell the story of what it is to be you in the world with your health as right. you intend and desire it be, right? And tell it in first person, first person, present tense. Yeah. You know, so that would be something like, you know, I'm 46. So I'd be, you know, I'm 40, I'm 51. And, you know, this is how my body is strong, resilient. And my spirit is as well, right? I play throughout the world, you know, whatever I would say, it would certainly be something like that for me, right? But, um, you know, inviting people to really step into telling that story of their health as they intend it to be in and, and really start to get, you know, if it's the scale that you've been struggling with, okay, yeah, of course we want the scale to be a number that you love, but really what does that make available for you? Right. Because it's about so much more than the scale. And if it wasn't about so much more than the scale, you'd already have this area of your life handled, but the scale is right. not super inspiring. So what's really inspiring is what would be available, you know, when you're freed up from this silly struggle, yeah. like life is about so much more yeah. and, and really getting in touch with that, you know, gives people an opportunity to start to go back to that as they move throughout their days, going back to their intention. It's like touching home base and every day, you know, stepping into touching home base at the beginning of your day, cueing into your intention so that as you start to move about the world, the noise starts to diminish, right? right? 
the noise of, is this good or is this bad? Which is all bull, right? Good right. and bad is the world of morality. And there's no right. morality. Food. Yeah, there's not food just right. produces certain outcomes you either mm -hmm. like it or you don't but there's no right. morality and so you know stepping into a different conversation called does this align with my intention you yeah. know will this actually support me in my journey to make that intention possible and just one foot in front of the, the other playing that game yeah no I I like that you know I, I ask the same thing to my clients you know that we want the good food bad food list and I always say, you know, there is no good for bad for this. It's just a matter of like, is today a day I want to eat based on my goals? Or is today that I'm going to say my goals are over here and I'm going to have a good day, be it have the ice cream with my kids because it's their birthday or maybe it's my birthday. I'm having a glass of wine and move on. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so cool. You know, don't you just love it? Kim? I can only imagine what your clients get out of stepping into that perspective. Yeah, they probably, you know, I would imagine like they learn how to bend and not break. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's so freeing because I mean, you know, you've probably experienced this like that, like mental prison of not, you know, wanting to be that good parent. At, but at the same time, you're like, it's ice cream, it's cake, you know, and not be that like crazy person around food. <laughs> right. 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 And, and what you're pointing to is something that I'm so passionate about, which is, you know, guiding, you know, women in particular in their journey to create a relationship with food in their body based on peace and empowerment and yeah. love. So for themselves and also so they can gift it to their children. Right. You know, because if you think about, you know, I can think of, you know, so many other health and fitness folks who, when they tell about their story of dieting, either they witnessed their parents, their grandparents, someone in their life who struggled with their weight. And, you know, you insert the crazy ass diet from the eighties and nineties, they were on it. And then we're like, maybe you should be on it too. Or, you know, let's go to Weight Watchers together or whatever. And, you know, nowadays, you know, we don't say that to people, our kids. Right, right. Mm -hmm. the, the thought mm -hmm. of you know telling you to telling your kids to diet is you know you might as well throw them out in the street in front of a car <laughs> truly truly yeah it's it's interesting yeah I I feel very very fortunate that my mom she never she she to this day I could be I you know I could wake up with like my hair and a not and drool all over my face and she'd tell me I was beautiful like right. thank you mom thank you <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> or she would find some way to like clean it up she'd be like um Joyce you know what before we head out look why don't you get cleaned up <laughs> <laughs> so funny and so then you, funny. in your mind you're like she's not like you girl you look like a train wreck she just uh, get a little cleaned up <laughs> the love the yes. love I, um, I love that only a mother can see. The mother can only see like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I'm um, thinking, oh my God, but out of my mouth, it's like, oh, you're so beautiful, darling. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Oh my gosh, true. You said something that I, 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 that I feel like people are like, you know what, Joyce, I get this. You make so much sense. But for a lot of people, I find it is, even though I, I'm clear in my intention, it's the courage to do something different. Mm. I have been dieting. I've been eating the same shit for 15 years. And now you're telling me that I shouldn't have the coffee with um, a smear of peanut butter for my breakfast. Right. Like, right. You, know, it, you, you know, it's like ripping their firstborn out of their hands. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I would say a few things to that. One is, um, you know, supporting people and finding new ways to self-soothe and self-nurture. Yeah. Right. I, I really think, you know, when people are turning to food, they're doing it from such a place of wisdom, mm -hmm. right? They just want to feel better. They just want to feel better. And it's so human. Like who doesn't want to feel better? Right. But their temporary solution is going to interfere with a long-term commitment in a really big way. 
a really, yeah. really major big way. Right. And so, you know, helping people resource, you know, just new ways of taking care of themselves that feel great, but also will support them in their, you know, fulfilling on their intended future. That's one thing. The other thing that I would say, uh, I heard this a few years ago and I was like, oh my gosh, that is so perfect because we can always, we can think about this in a lot of different areas of our life, but, um, and what it is, is that we're always saying no to something, right? We are right. always saying no to something. So, you know, to, to the gal who loves the, you know, orange mocha frappuccino that has, you know, 80 grams of sugar in the morning, right? Um, maybe your next step isn't, you know, a completely, you know, a black coffee, so to speak, right? Maybe right, that's right. not your next step. Maybe your next step is getting a smaller size and you cut yeah. down from 80 grams of sugar to 60. So that's right. a great step, right? So, you know, looking at playing your best game rather than a perfect game is going to go far. And, um, you know, being in that journey continually, right? You go from 80 to 60, you stay there, you stay in those, that, that smaller size, still super sugary, deliciousness, coffee thing. Right. And then, you know, maybe a couple of weeks later, you're like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to ask for a half a half of a pump instead of a full pump. Right. right. And you kind of just play And the cool thing about that is your brain and your taste buds will adapt, right? Your brain mm -hmm. is where we bring sweetness. And so if you kind of just slowly step into it, um, over time, it's so fun. I mean, I'm sure you get this too. I love it when I hear from people, oh yeah, I took a bite of, you know, so-and-so's cake and it was, I couldn't believe it. It was just way too sweet, yeah. you know? And, you know, meanwhile, six weeks earlier, they were, you know, struggling couldn't not to up, have a third helping. I can't helping. give it up, right. I can't, I can't <laughs> give it up. <laughs> right. And yet, so you're right. Cause it's like the, the courage isn't because we're talking about all or nothing. So the courage isn't saying, no, you know, no more orange frappuccino. The courage is okay. We know the frappuccino isn't the key to health. Yeah. Yeah. So where would you feel comfortable starting? You know, it yes. could be, you know, if you're getting the vente, then can you take that vente and make it a grande? Absolutely. Absolutely. Or Absolutely. That's, maybe, you know, part of the all or nothing world is the idea that either I'm doing the venti orange frappuccino or I'm like suffering having a black coffee. Right. Or just none at all. Right. Yeah, you know, exactly. so, right. And, and that's just bull. Like that's just bull. You know, if you think of any one of us who has mastered the skill called walking and then running. Yeah. It, can you imagine if the people around us who were cheering us on when we learn how to stand they were, their next thing was like, okay, now you need to sprint down the street. <laughs> right. And then, yeah. And then run a marathon. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Like chop, 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 kiddo. <laughs> yeah. No. And I love the walking analogy because, you know, I think that's one of the things that all of us have witnessed. Uh, we've witnessed someone walk and we've seen, you know, the drunken sailor walk from the toddler and then, you know, they fall on their butt and you're like, it's okay. Where if we tried that Frappuccino analogy and we failed, sign, see, now I got to get two. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. Imagine with your kiddo, they fell. Oh, sorry. I guess you're just not going to learn how to walk. Right. <laughs> I guess you'll crawl for the rest of your life. You'll be a 20 year old <laughs> crawler. Good luck with that. Right. <laughs> yeah yeah no totally yeah so I, I think you bring up a great point which is really you know being compassionate with our humanity right when we're up to something big and mastering this area of life is big and if it weren't big it wouldn't be a multi-billion dollar industry yeah right so make no mistake it takes something to master this area of your life and it is totally masterable but you know, knowing that it takes something, you should know, like, you're probably going to fall down and it's yeah. okay. Like, that's just, you know what you do when you fall down? You get back up. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, as we age, we lose the, um, that resilience, you know, because maybe we've had a lot of successes, like fast and things have come to us pretty easily. And you know, so many of us, we want that, the, 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 the magic blueprint, you know, 
take step two, step one, and like put it together like a piece of Ikea furniture. And we're humans. And so, you know, we have life coming at us. Yeah. And, you know, I can't, I can't predict once we get off, off of this call in your mind, you're like, oh, I'm good off this call. I'm going to do the next three things. You might get a phone call like, hey, you got to pick up a sick kid. Well, there goes that day. Or your boss mm -hmm. drops something on your lap. You got to get it done by five o'clock or, you know, whatever. And I think so many of us plan on the perfect day all the time. And if it's not that perfect day all the time, we're like, see? So well said, Kim. So well said. I was talking to a uh, gal who I work with earlier today, having this exact conversation, right? She was talking about, okay, what she was going to do to set her up to have uh, herself up to have breakfast in the morning. And, and, you know, she came up with the solution of, okay, I could make eggs or I could make a smoothie or I could do homemade um, oatmeal with flax and blah, blah, blah. Right. And I was like, okay, great. Now what's your backup plan? when your son, you know, vomits, right, exactly. and you're like, you don't clean up after him. Right. And you're not blue hits eggs. your house and you're not right in the mood to cook. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's your backup plan? Cause we need one. Right. So, but it's all part of the journey is learning. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. You know, like I, I love what you said, right. You know, planning for the perfect, like that's great, but let me know when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> And I always tell my, I always tell my clients like before I did this, I was a meeting planner and shit always happened. Like you, you're like it's on the checklist and then you would get to the site and they promised you, you would have whatever they promised you. And you're like, Oh, that screen is 13 inches. You told me it was 30. Oh, what do I do? And I couldn't just say to the meeting, sorry, we're all going to look on a postage stamp screen. You know, I always had to, in my mind, have this plan B because you know, mm. shit happens. Yes. And, and I, you know, and I'm sure you share this with your clients, like the same shit always seems to happen. So we have to have a, a, a route, a detour. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Being strategic is, is really important. And also learning what strategies work in different situations. Right. Right. There are going to be strategies that are really helpful for your kind of Monday through Friday workday. There are going to be strategies that are going to be really helpful for a Friday night celebration or a vacation or a work trip, right? But, right. you know, when people are on the journey in, in, you know, coming from a how can I approach over time, they will start to, you know, people are so smart. They come up with great solutions. Oh, Yeah. No, it's like, I just love hearing what people come up with in the, in the, when they get really inventive and they're like, yeah, this is happening. Like, yes, yeah. it is. Well, you know, it, it, for a lot of people, it's the forethought. So it's like, you know, as I'm working with people, I'm like, okay, so you're, you're, you're going on vacation. I'm like, well, I can't go to the grocery store. Um, so there's these services called Instacart. They'll shop for you. Have you heard of it? <laughs> right. Right. Oh my gosh. And they're like, Oh, well, I'm really picky about my produce. I'm like, okay, but do you just buy produce? Can you buy like 80% of your food through Instacart and all you have to worry about is produce? Yep. Yep. So totally. It's, so I think, you know, so many people kind of get vapor locked into like, this is how it has to be. Yes. And not yeah. kind of like, and they're just like in the corner, like, yes. This is like, I only can go to the star market. If I'm done, if I don't go to star market, then I'm done. Right. And you're just like, uh, are you? And so it's kind of, I think, you know, one of the reasons why people should work with a coach, um, we help you zoom out. You know, it's so easy yeah. to get so like, you know, vapor lock that like when you're looking at the forest, all you see is the birch trees and you're like, but there's a pine tree right behind it. <laughs> Well said, totally well said. Yeah, yeah. Like having someone who can help you deconstruct what you quote unquote know is yeah. true. Like, oh, really? Do you know it's true? Do you really? You know? And I love, I love that uh, Instacart analogy. I am like a, I, we, I think we're, we're uh, equal fans. Oh my gosh. Uh, life changing. Having someone deliver my groceries is 
I, I wish it for everyone in the world. <laughs> I mean, it's just like the best. Well, it's funny because it's like there was there were like there was this company probably like right when the whole internet started. And if this is when I was working in corporate, and I was working crazy hours and I never went to the grocery store because I was like, the last thing I want to do is go to the damn grocery store. And I sort of ordered from them and then they went out. This it was one of those internet startups and then they went out of business. And I was like, God damn it, like no one else needs groceries delivered. And it was seriously, it was fabulous because it was like it would force me also to come home from work, be like, all right, seven o'clock, they're coming to deliver my groceries. I gotta go. I gotta go. I'm, right. I'm, I don't want to miss my grocery delivery. And then I was like, this is just like it just saves so much time. You buy the same things all the time. So it's just a matter of like click, click, click. Boom. See you on Thursday. Absolutely. I totally agree. And I always, you know, a few things, you know, would I prefer a uh, bright red tomato over a slightly dull one? Yeah. But you know what? I hate more going to the grocery store. Right. <laughs> you know? And you know what? No one can chop up my grocery, you know, no one can chop my veggies for me, but someone can shop for them for me. So yeah. I'm going to use my whole thing is less, less time shopping, more time chopping. <laughs> Yeah. And so, you know, I always kind of like, you know, I always say to my clients, like, we got to pick our battles. Like, I know me. I'm like, yeah, if I, ha I look at my week, if I, if I got the time, I'll go to the grocery store. If I don't have the time, Instacart is bringing my doorbell and yes. bring my stuff in my home. Yes, absolutely. Totally and I, agree. And I sacrifice my produce that week, or I'm like, you know what? I can go to the grocery store for 15 minutes and grab my produce. Yeah. 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 I, I totally agree. <laughs> So I, you know, I, I like everything you, you said. The one thing you said that I want to circle back that I thought was absolutely fabulous. You talked about one of the reasons why we get into this all or nothing mindset is that we have self-aggression. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? That is just like fabulous. Because I, I, I feel that we get into this all or nothing mindset is that because maybe there are things we can't control. It, so. Yeah, possibly. I mean, definitely, I think there's an aspect of control, but there's also this aspect of, you know, listen, we have eyes, we want to look our best. There's nothing oh, wrong with right. that, as long as it's within, you know, healthy reason, right? Um, but people don't have a really good, you know, model for how to get there, right? How to, how right. to make those shifts. And so really what they've been dealt is, you know, like look at the gajillion diet books on the shelf, yeah. you know? And so that is really, um, you know, it, when people step into that, you know, diet mentality, it is an all in or all out, right? They're either on a diet or they're off a diet. And right. for most people, you know, just like we were talking about imagining uh, a kiddo who just learned how to stand you know, saying, okay, now go run a marathon, right. right? It is, it is like that, right? People just aren't geared up yet to make that kind of a drastic shift, right? So in, in, again, you know, I, it's not to say that people need to completely make the drastic shifts of something like an AIP or a paleo or, you know, the diet du jour that's out there, but, right. um, you know, to get new outcomes, you do need to take new actions. Yes. But when actions come from a place of self-love, they're typically sustainable. When actions come from a place of self-aggression, they're not sustainable or, you know, on the, on the, you know, diet mentality world, um, or they're just not going to get you the outcomes you're committed to. Right. Cause the, you know, all either you're in the world of overindulgence, which is different than indulgence. So the world of overindulgence isn't going to get people the outcomes they're looking for. And the world of deprivation isn't sustainable. That's not yeah. going to get people the outcomes they're yeah. looking for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, you're right. Cause it's, I, I, I look at the self-aggression also is that, you know, that, um, I look at myself in the mirror and I make what I see about me versus other things. And so mm. I try to have the control with the deprivation or if I feel lack of control, you know, you go to the other side of just like, this, mm. these Oreos are going to make everything better. 
Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I definitely is. It's, I can totally understand that. It's definitely, I think a lot of people are, feel the same way and are in the same boat. And, and there really is a different way of, you know, shifting. And, and the, the main thing is that, you know, it's not about eating perfectly, whatever that means. Yeah. It really is being able to be proud of how you're caring for yourself, right? Like not proud so that you can tell people or you get like a trophy or something like that, but just really that you're honoring yourself, right? Cause you know, I don't know, what, what would you say? Do you feel like it's self-honoring deprivation or overindulgence? Yeah, no, I, I like that. Cause it, you know, I think the conversation we're, we're saying is that instead of having that immediate feeling like mm. I must, you know, I was bad. I was good. I must. So it's like, if I'm, I'm bad, then I must either go down that rabbit hole and just right. see it through the end or yeah. I must deprive because I was bad. Uh, yep. 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 Yes, <laughs> and, absolutely. And so I think for, for many of us, it's like having that feeling and just pausing, you know, like having the you know, the foresight to say, okay, something's going on here. I can either, yeah. you know, continue down the path I'm going or I can figure my shit out. Yes. Right. Right. And it's a little bit like looking at like, what, what would be helpful in this moment? Yeah. And I think, you know, like for me, what would be helpful? And then, right. you know, reflecting on for yourself. And I know for, and I know that, you know, right now, if I looked at, you know, you said that, that, that future person. And if I looked at like Kim, maybe not five years ago, maybe Kim 10 years ago, if you said Kim 10 years ago, before you thought you had to be at the gym for two hours and your food had to be weighed and measured every morsel you put in your mouth, I don't know if I could have paused. And I know some people listening here, you might not have that pause, but I will tell you that Kim from 10 years ago would have been like, wait, there's another way. Mm, yeah. Maybe I wasn't ready, but yes. there is another way. Yeah. 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 And to your point, right. Being able to pause, that is why I really am such a champion for people starting their day with a pause, right? And it uh, doesn't mean big ordeal it can be two minutes yes of reflecting on what's my intention for my health and my life because you know being able to pause in the heat of a moment when you are upset about a choice yeah. you just made, and to at that moment not be pulled in the inertia of what used to be a reaction, right? The old reaction. Okay. I'm just, I ate three Oreo cookies. Now I'm going to eat the whole thing. Or I ate half a pint of ice cream. So I'm going to eat the whole thing, you know, like whatever it is, you know, you know, what's better than eating a full pint of ice cream is stopping at a half a pint. If that's when you come to, right. The best thing you can do for yourself is dig deep and find a place to pause. And in that moment, just that one moment, don't worry about any other moment. No, no other moment in the world matters. Just that one moment say, we've had enough. We're going to put this away. Yeah, no, I, I, I like that. And I, you know, I like the, the pause piece. And I feel like so many of, and I don't know about you, a lot of my clients are the like type A++ with a side of A++, you know, go get them. You yes. Know, if yes. You, if you tell them to slow down for five minutes, they're like, well, I'm going to be behind. And I, I know me, that was me. <laughs> so I, you know, I feel like I'm talking to, like, if I could go back 10 years ago and be like, girlfriend, slow the hell down. <laughs> right. Right. Yes. Yeah. The pace of life that, uh, I think the world's starting to wake up a little bit, but the pace of life that's kind of, uh, I don't know, put up as uh, the end all be all, you know, for yes. everybody it's for most people, it, it's not really workable, right? It's no. not really, uh, it's not really a recipe for joy, no. you know? And, uh, 
I, I think, you know, uh, it's very natural for people in their twenties and maybe their early thirties to feel kind of hypnotized by, Oh, I got to go faster. Got to get more and more and more. Yeah. Um, but my wish is, you know, somewhere along the way, you know, just like you did, right. People learn to say, wait a second, is this really how I want my life to go? Like, is this, is this what I want my legacy to be that I went really, really fast and was really, really busy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's true. And I, again, causing you to pause. <laughs> and, you know, for me, you know, um, Rona was a, that big pause for me that was like, you know what? I kind of like this slow quietness of life versus mm -hmm. always being like running from yeah. here to there to there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, in the, you know, somewhere in the quarantining world, my husband and I uh, moved from downtown Chicago to um, a quiet kind of cul-de-sac neighborhood in North Scottsdale. <laughs> and it was unbelievable you know like I've been a city girl I went to UCLA undergrad yeah. I grew up in the suburbs so that's not the city but from the time I was 17 you until were in the, the time city. yes exactly exactly and I loved the city loved 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 the city could never imagine not living in the city it was like part of my identity yeah kind of like about the people who are like, but I have to pick my own produce. It was like, but I have to live in the city, right? And then we got to this sleepy little cul-de-sac neighborhood. And on the third day, I looked at my husband, Chris, and I was like, I didn't even notice how much tension I was carrying in my body. You know, oh my like, and I love Chicago. It's a great city. Yeah. But it took getting out of the hustle and bustle and a lot, a lot of people in a smaller space. I mean, Chicago is not exactly like the tiniest town, but still it's a lot of people in a small place space, you know, it's still a big city. And so being able to step out and feel what that was like, I was like, gosh, I don't, I don't really know if I ever want to do that again. <laughs> it's funny. Cause it's like, I, I feel the same way about the city. I'm like, I need to be able to like walk to the grocery store if I need cream for my coffee. Like, I, yeah, yeah. We have gone like into like you know the I I call it the country. We have gone to the country, and I'm like I'm at my you know I'll be at a, at the house, and I'll be like um so it's a thirty minute drive to the store. Do I want to go? And uh, and I was like I always bring all this food with me because I'm like I can't think about thirty minutes to the store. Right. Right. Totally. Totally. So I totally get like some, like some things are a little too slow. So I need to find that like in between. The middle ground. It's the theme, yes, right? The middle ground. And so speaking of which, do you have a program coming up or, or is that your evergreen program? So I actually, so the beginning of 2023, I am going to be launching a program, you know, what's better than January. Uh, but really, you know, inviting people to step into a whole new approach, right? This is not a 30 day fix it program, right? And so uh, in January, 2023, I will be launching Mastering Your Middle Ground. And, uh, you know, between now and then for any of your listeners who would like to connect, they can go to wellempower.com and schedule a complimentary 30 minute com conversation. Um, and, uh, whether it's to explore working together one-on-one -on -one or explore participating in the 2023, uh, mastering your middle ground, uh, course, it would be a pleasure to connect with, uh, any of your, your listeners here. And what are you going to be covering in mastering the middle ground? Well, really it's going to be a journey that, uh, guides people in stepping out of the broken all or nothing approach, right? So guiding people with the information, inspiration, and strategies that are fundamentally required to master anything, and in particular, mastering weight loss. So uh, that will be the conversation for, for, you know, I haven't quite decided if I really want it to be six months, and I keep going back and forth. I'm like, oh, should I make it four months, six months? But it's going to be multi-months. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, you know, like your gut tells you, like, you know, what people, what it'll take for people to 
it's practice, right? You know, like where yeah. we're, you're asking the participants to think different. And, you know, for many of us, you know, I know everyone at, or I don't know who came up with it, 21 days to, you know, create a habit. And, you know, let's be honest, how many times we've done something for 21 days and we're like, you're going to need to do that again. <laughs> right. Right, right, and then right, right. Maybe again. Maybe yeah. again. Yeah. Well, and the thing is with weight loss, you know, that's such shenanigans anyway, because to master weight loss, it's not one habit. No. It's no. About, you know, I would guess it's probably about, let me just think objectively for a second. Truly, I would guess it's about 200 habits mastered in multiple situations and environments. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so it's not going to take 21 days. <laughs> no, because it's like, you know, let's but it's also not going to take 20 years, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And when, you know, I, I always feel like whenever I hear people say they're going to do this, you know, 30 day jump start, and it's like day 31, what are you going to do? What's day 31 look like? They're I, like, uh, order pizza and drink a bottle of wine. <laughs> right. Celebrate that I graduated. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So, no, I, I like that because it is, I I think for many of us, it is trying to find our, our footing when there is not perfection. You know, that yeah. what happens, like, you know, we have alluded to, like, what happens when I travel? And yeah. I don't have that, like, you know, I can't make my own vegetables, my own salad. Like, what do I do? Or birthday yes. parties or, you know, ho the holidays at the time of this recording, the holidays are coming up. And like, that's always kind of like a big shit storm for so many people. Yes. Yes. So it's like, and, you know, with, with that in mind, you know, these, this holiday season, right? Like for your listeners, everyone, right. It's, if you can just step through the holidays leaning into what's the best choice I can make right now. Oh, yeah. you, know, you can play that game. You know, if the best choice you can make is having three cookies instead of five, that's awesome. If the best choice you can make is having four drinks instead of eight, that's awesome. You know, but really if you can in earnest answer that question and play that with your heart, that's, you know, you'll get me standing and applauding all day long. I, I love that because it's like, we, you know, we think I have to go to this party and white knuckle it, like no, no drinks or, oh, don't let them pull out whatever the thing is your Achilles heel. Right. And, but if you say, you know what, that Achilles heel is really freaking good and I'm going to have it, have that. Mm -hmm. especially I yeah. you know I, th I think it usually comes around like Thanksgiving, you go to Thanksgiving and, you know, aunt so-and-so has her world famous insert the world famous thing that she has and if it is world famous and it does really taste good have at but if it's world famous in her mind and it tastes like crap don't have it right right oh my gosh I used to work with this woman in her journey she used to call it uh it was bread for her that was her kryptonite and she created this term she's like but it wasn't worth it bread <laughs> it's like okay cool right it wasn't worth it exactly you know because like some you know sometimes you take a couple you like something looks really good and i've been guilty of it like it looks fabulous you take a bite you're like oh not, it's not like it yeah <laughs> not what i like in your mind you made it all sexy and right. then you like went to go take a bite you're like oh it's, it's kind of yeah. like the it's kind of like the the cute guy that you see across the room and you're like he's gorgeous and then he talks he's dumb as a box of rocks you're like wow not as cute after all right right, right go back right. to where you came from exactly exactly <laughs> this has been absolutely fabulous and the one thing I ask all of my guests before I close out the interview is what's one thing that makes you feel magical one thing that makes me feel magical is using my body in nature Ooh. Ooh. I just I adore I adore being outside in lovely weather and um, using my body. And in particular, I adore hiking. Ooh. So hiking makes me feel magical. <laughs> and you probably get to do a little bit more of it a little closer to home now that you've relocated to Arizona. Well, uh, we actually, I do get to do some of it closer to our home. But I no longer, we no longer live in Arizona. We now ah. live in Switzerland. 
we live in Switzerland. So <laughs> what? Oh my God. So you're the hills are alive there. <laughs> like Literally, they're singing out my door. Um, so it is uh, the mountain Sierra. They can move me to tears on a daily basis. They're unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I've been to Zermatt and you like look around and like everything is a, a postcard. Truly, truly. That's awesome. I love that you've been there. That's that's great. Yeah. <sighs> everything there is a, a, a postcard and you're just like, where can't I look and see beauty? It's true. It's true. It, it's so awe-inspiring. So to me, it's like, you know, using my body in that kind of beauty is, oh, it's just, it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, I, I love that. And um, where can people connect with you um, in the social world? Yeah. So social media, Instagram at Well Empowered. So Instagram at Well Empowered. And, you know, like I said, for anyone who would like to connect on a Zoom conversation, wellempowered.com, please click and uh, find yourself a time on my, on my calendar. Cool, 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 cool. This has just been such a great conversation. I mean, you just, I mean, I, I would take notes. There's so many great takeaways from this conversation. And I hope everyone listening has taken, you know, the one thing I'm going to take away is what's the best choice right now, right? That is, that's how I'm going to break away from my perfection is just like in this moment, best choice. Like Love even, it. If, even if it is have the 20 Oreos, <laughs> go for it. 20, 20 Oreos is better than 40, right? Better right. choice than 40. Yeah. So really just answering that, that question. I love it. That's great, Kim. Yeah. So thank you so much for taking the time. And I, God knows what time it is in Switzerland. I can't even do, <laughs> I, I, I suck at like, um, clock math. <laughs> it's, it's, it's daily mental gymnastics for me, but it is currently a little bit after 10 PM, which is all, all right. good. Yeah. That's yeah. Not so bad. All right. Totally. Well, thank you so much. And magic makers, feel free to reach out to her. I am sure that if you are struggling with this, she can definitely help write your ship out of this all or nothing place into that place where she calls uh, mastering the middle. Thank you so much, Kim. It's been such a treat to be with you and your audience. Thank you so much.